Natural dyes were once the only way of coloring fabrics in Gambia. Artists extracted vibrant orange pigments from the indigenous kola nut. And this deep blue color was made from indigo leaves. They were used to make the intricate tie-dye designs that have been a fashion staple throughout West Africa for at least a thousand years. But in recent decades, artisans have been replacing these traditional ingredients for imported chemical dyes that are easier and faster to work with. Musa Jete is the last tie dyer in his town of Sukuta in Gambia, still using only natural dyes and traditional techniques. We traveled there to see how this ancient craft is still standing. Musa goes to Serekunda market to buy kola nuts twice a week. They only grow along the West African coast, and they're a popular gift for naming ceremonies and weddings. Okay. All right. In Gambia, the nuts are also used to make a traditional orange dye. Musa says the key to getting the best color is washing them thoroughly. He works from his family compound where he lives with his wife and children. Fifteen years ago, he had to do everything himself. But now that his children are older, everyone pitches in. His daughter helps him crush the kola nuts. It takes a lot of strength. Some artisans have switched to grinding machines, but they are expensive, and Musa doesn't think they are worth it. His kids usually get one kilo of nuts crushed in 15 minutes. Musa soaks the pulp in cold water. This helps release the pigment almost immediately. The secret to the designs lies in the ancient tying method known as tritique. Musa chooses them based on the fabric. Most of the time he follows a traditional pattern. Then after Numbota Nyinambe do fana city ra wolbe kela dol ka fan dol ka fola asaman dol dol ka fo je cloud. But other times he likes to improvise. Pleating and tying a three-meter-long cotton cloth by hand can take him up to an hour. The tight knots form the pattern by stopping the dye from coloring the whole cloth. Musa has memorized countless patterns, mixing and matching them to create a custom design. And he's making sure to teach them to the next generation. For other designs, Musa melts down candle wax. Then he stamps the fabric to block the dye in specific spots. This technique is called batik. Indentured African soldiers brought it to West Africa during the 19th century colonial era after fighting for the Dutch in Indonesia. Musa has over 200 wooden stamps in his collection. He even carves his own, drawing inspiration from the world around him. <laughs> Finally, it's time to submerge his work in the dye. For the best results, he soaks the fabric overnight to absorb the pigments. Musa learned the craft from his parents when he was just eight years old. But he never thought he would become a full-time artisan like them. His dream was to be a doctor, but he couldn't afford to pay for his education. Mia no man ken doctor o to wolo min ndiko 
kodu ko nata na family na family batandi bake ngaje ko odam ma fana manke silo do pour ka ke docteur ti se keno si fa do fanantela wala nam dunta ni mecho kono ni ngutubro kono ka continent di now he's happy with the path he took For the next stage, Musa makes his own indigo dye. He buys his leaves from local markets. Ina un karafe ngoti, indo na uka wona ngine. Indo na ukara mesa ngoti, ina kasoto na ngambia ja. So, ika in fulol ke nyoka. To make his indigo stronger, he uses plants growing in his own backyard. Wala mo nyente, indo mo wandola te, indo mo temfiroti. He says the chemicals in both help the indigo dye last longer. Musa soaks the roots in water overnight to release the acid. Then he strains the water into the indigo. He makes sure it's strong enough by tasting it. So niale inne ngobala isalon ko nyi ay acid ay fen ko sotola e wotole ka tesi inne ngobala tek he burns the palm tree flowers into ashes, then soaks it in water to make a mixture called say. Then he strains the liquid into his indigo vat. Musa stamps the dry fabric with wax one more time. This will block the next layer of dye. Indigo is so potent that Musa only needs to dip the fabric in it six times at most for the color to penetrate. For a richer color, he leaves the fabric in the vat for 20 minutes. Leaving it longer could ruin the design. The indigo dye will oxidize once it's out of the vat, turning a deep blue color. Musa's family has been using indigo to make textiles for at least four generations. It's the reason the craft means so much to him. His father was a part of a large ethnic group called the Fula, a nomadic tribe known for using indigo. It's the main color of their traditional clothes. Musa's father would travel from country to country selling his tie-dyed fabrics. Musa wants to pass on the skill like his ancestors did. People in Gambia have been practicing tie dye for generations. The art was passed down in families, practiced in the home, and even taught in schools. Natural colors from indigo and kola nuts were once the only dyes available. But when tourists began visiting Gambia in the mid-1960s, it created a more lucrative market for the craft. Soon, chemical dyes were imported from Germany to meet higher demand. They came in multiple colors and were quicker to use. The brighter, more colorful designs also appealed to tourists. Nowadays, most artists in Gambia opt for chemical dyes. Because Today, Musa is the last in his community to only use natural dyes. While the chemical ones are more convenient, he says it's not worth the risk. Chemical dangerous to buy. Akana dulatinya, akan alhawa fana mantor. He recognizes how special his work is every time he cuts a thread and reveals his newest creations. Every piece is unique. Are you happy with this one? Yes, I'm happy. I'm happy with this one. 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 
ngalo na kumodo fana ba kontana la katuko ika fena dada mi alonko ya dia marila e mi abuloko as a final touch he irons the fabric by beating it with two wooden clubs then it's ready to sell like many artisans in gambia today musa sells mostly to tourists he works with a non-profit that helps sell his fabrics online to international customers too. But the last two decades have been bad for business. In 2014, the Ebola virus epidemic stopped tourism throughout West Africa for nearly three years. And when COVID-19 hit in 2020, Musa said he had no sales for months. He was forced to find odd jobs, like installing satellite dishes, and at one point, he feared business would never recover. But in 2021, an unexpected order changed everything for him. Kabiringa big order soto kabo njim film maker ya mim keta women kind. Musa made more than 200 tie dye and batik fabrics for the Hollywood blockbuster, and his work was seen by millions around the world. Musa believes this was his sign to keep going and make sure the craft stays alive. Now, he's focused on teaching traditional tie-dye and batik to others. He trains dozens of people in his district so they can make careers out of it. Tie-dye has helped Musa sustain his family for 35 years. And with his children eager to follow in his footsteps, he thinks the future of the craft is promising. Ha, ha, ha.